But my irritation level for this smoke, and I think I speak for a lot of us out there, it's this high right now. I'm just tired of this. Look at the visibilities. They're so far down. I-80 out here in the distance. Uh, temperatures just where you like them, almost room temperatures on the outside. I'm Jeff James, and for Damon, and uh, we have a real nice start for you here on this first full day of spring. And also coming up on the other side of the break, we are going to look at some travel trouble spots across the nation, big snows and big cold. Okay, the red areas, that's where it's just straight up unhealthy, any way you look at it. They have these little measuring devices, the DEQ, at different locations. And right now, it's measuring very high quantities of PM2.5. That's the nasty stuff. And in the afternoon, you get the ozone because the sun works on that and creates this chemical reaction. I want you to notice the few frames going from 11 to 12 o'clock. Notice how many more green spots there are. These are those pulse storms beginning to, to brew and fire up. And there's a lot of vertical development, and they hold a lot of water. So that's why we have those flood watches in place from central Utah, southward, right down to the border. The storm drains are filling fast here, just north of town in Rio Linda, back through about Citrus Heights. It's this pocket of rain right here that's very concerning. It's going to really slow you down if you're heading out, trying to get to the freeway. And, Good luck trying to make a 65 mile per hour drive because it is going to be tough. And then, of course, you've been hearing about the avalanche warnings. Uh, it's very easy for the snow to break off their cornices, so just be very, very careful out there. Backcountry travelers, even the skiers that are more experienced, just be careful. <laughs> 19 below zero. And that powerful, dangerous cold air is going to combine with this moisture. This is subtropical. And I tell you what, by Friday, the national outlets are going to be talking about all the heavy snow, probably up to a foot of snow with extremely cold air, New York City and Boston. We'll have to wait and see what happens. Now, here we are on the tail end of the clipper, so we didn't see much from that. But we're watching up here in the Pacific Northwest. Storm timing on the, on the lower part of the atmosphere causes that instability through the afternoon. I think we're going to really see things cut loose to the south. But not yet. I can tell you from experience being out there, you're probably not going to be able to see much more than maybe two or 300 yards in some cases. If you're going to head out to Cabo or Mazatlan, if you have an opportunity to cancel it, I'd do it because this thing is not forecasted to move. It's not Elko, Wells, Battle Mountain. This blue shading is for a frost advisory. And when temperatures start to drop under clear skies, they can drop down to the dew point for a few hours. So maybe three, four hours or so, we could see some near freezing temperatures around here. And get this. <laughs> carry your, carry your, your the bear, bear gas, spray, bear yeah. spray. Yeah. I, I could never be convinced that that's going to work though. I mean, could, <laughs> I'd be. Could you right. ever really spray that accurately? I guess. And they give they give directions. There are things you're supposed to do, like spray it into the ground, not into their face. You yeah. Because then it comes like, up. Really? It's like you're not going to remember it. No, so. not at all. <laughs> <laughs> that's like, just run away. Oh, yeah. We're all going to flee. Hopefully you have a good. <laughs> hopefully you got a good 40 time too, because <laughs> catch up to you. Hey, there you go. That's the best way to start out 2014, right? I love it. <laughs> See, we're still partying around here. <laughs> Very nicely done. Oh, thank you. Those days are long over. Now the back kind of gets thrown out more often. Now right you're now. like, I need to add oh. and then I'll do it. <laughs> it's those deep bends on the brake that breaks you, you think. All right, let's go over to Jeff tonight to take a look at what's outside. Well, I don't think it's just my opinion, but I, you know, today was a perfect 10, wasn't it? Mm. Beautiful. Gorgeous. Yeah. Have you had a little time to break out from work, guys? You know exactly what I'm talking about, and hopefully you did as well. Break away from the office, get outside for a few moments. If only we could land this on the weekend. The weekend doesn't look to be in the best shape. We'll get to that in just a moment. First off, let's go outside. 60 degrees currently at this time, variable breeze, about 3 miles per hour, and humidity at 37%. Uh, By the way, look at that gorgeous moon. You know, Last night officially was the harvest moon. That's the uh, full moon that's closest to the autumnal equinox, which starts on Sunday. It's fall. But we've only lost a little sliver of its light, so go out there and check it out. The thing is just so radiant and bright. 59 degrees in Ogden. Calm breeze. You can't even measure it. It's so light. Pressure at 30.03. Now, humidity is low and way down south in the St. George 80s. But you know, they did make 90 plus degrees. I was hoping they wouldn't, but uh, that cold front that ushered us some really cool air came in a little too late for them. It kind of dissolved before it got there. 72 today compared to the average of 78. Cooler than normal. Tomorrow, warmer than normal. We're, we're tacking things up. And with re regard to those low temperatures, yes, it was very cool. Some sub-freezing readings. Salt Lake, 47 this morning. Really not that colder than normal. But the thing is, we're going to do it again tonight. We're going to be below. So, you know, extra blankets for the kids and yourself, perhaps, and uh, some slippers around the house here to just keep the windows shut. All right, here we go. Here's the high-resolution radar. There's nothing going on anywhere, uh, as far as the eye can see, all across the western states. But look at this. This is amazing. Yeah, that cold front that uh, triggered all the cooling from a few nights ago. You can see that strong gradient from 80s to 60s through Kansas City, Omaha, 50s. They had snow up in Montana today. 
And check this out, a huge squall line of storms from Milwaukee southward all the way to the tip of Texas. In Kansas City, they're undergoing some water rescues right now as we speak. So if you have some friends there, make sure you give them a call, make sure they're okay. Now, from now until Saturday, it's all about the warmth of this area of high pressure. This is the next line of cold air, though, that's associated with a couple of storms that are sitting out here across the Pacific. By Sunday at 6 p.m., there's where the front is located. And at 6 p.m., of course, we're thinking about the big ball game. At this point, one thing can be assured, a lot of wind. It'll still be pretty mild, but when that front comes in, the timing appears to be Sunday morning. We could be talking about, you ready for this? A skiff of snow, highest Uintas, snow, yes, 9,000 feet and above, even the northern Wasatch Mountains. I know, didn't we just finish up? <laughs> didn't we just finish up winter, it seems? 49 degrees, clear. Not so cold, or not as cold as it was this morning. Uh, but tomorrow, it's going to take some time. We are ultimately going to get above normal to 83 degrees, and that's still a perfect 10, maybe a 9.5 overall, in my opinion. 72, Park City tomorrow, 72, Evanston, 81, Delta, 80 in Cedar City, 93 in St. George. Okay, so here's how it looks with seven days out. Lots of wind all weekend long for southern Utah. The, the dip goes from 92 to 84. We stay in the 80s, and then get this. This will be the first into the new season, 70s for high temperatures in St. George. So this, this is not the front I was even talking about, guys, for the weekend. That's the next one that comes up the middle of next week, and that's assured to give us a fair amount of rain. I think this one coming up on Sunday, again, it's going to be after the ball game, the showers into Sunday, but I don't think it's going to be giving us a lot of measurable rain. It's cold, though, isn't it? Snow? So snow? Perfect snow. football weather, yeah. and no rain till after the game. That's, that's what I'm thinking now. That could change. Brett will be back in tomorrow. All right. And you guys are competing teams, so we'll see what happens. That's right.